Welcome back to this Stiefelser course on diffusion models. I'm Mandy, and in this lesson, we'll be getting introduced to latent diffusion models. Latent diffusion models are generative deep learning models that have skyrocketed in popularity, not only amongst the AI community, but out in the general public as well. Let's now begin our journey into investigating what exactly a latent diffusion model is, starting with its precursor, the diffusion model. At the highest level, a diffusion model is a generative deep learning model. As we know, deep learning models make use of deep neural networks. And a generative model is a model that is used to generate new data. So at a really high level, we can think of a diffusion model just as a deep neural network that generates things. And as we are likely now familiar with, these things that we are currently most interested in using diffusion models for are images. Now let's take it a step further to understand the actual name, diffusion. In general, diffusion models are trained to denoise data in a sequential, step-by-step -step fashion. As we'll later become familiar with, this denoising process is how a diffusion model can actually generate images. For now, we can just think about the training data for diffusion models consisting of noisy images. And we can think about these diffusion models as being trained to remove the noise from the noisy training data so that we're left with these clear image samples. And the way in which the diffusion model removes the noise from the training images is generally referred to as the diffusion process. Later, we'll develop an understanding for how exactly this noise removal diffusion process results in the cool images that we've seen these models generate. For now, though, we can just think of these models as accepting noisy training data and outputting clear images from them. Now, elaborating more on the nomenclature here, we've probably all at this point at least heard of really popular models like stable diffusion. And stable diffusion is indeed a latent diffusion model. Now, we haven't yet said what a latent diffusion model is. We've been harping on diffusion models. As we can see that latent diffusion models are a subset of diffusion models. And of course, as we alluded to earlier, diffusion models are generative deep learning models. So now let's zoom in on the idea of latent diffusion models to see how they differ from diffusion models in general. Recall that we refer to the diffusion process as this denoising process that diffusion models do to remove noise from noisy training data. Now, general diffusion models apply this denoising diffusion process on the pixel space of the image data. And as we know, images can be very large in size and training on image data can require a lot of computational resources. So here is where latent diffusion models come into play. Latent diffusion models actually work with compressed representations of the original image data. And these compressed representations are referred to as latents. So in other words, latent diffusion models work in lower dimensional latent space rather than a higher dimensional pixel space, which reduces the amount of computational resources and therefore improves efficiency. So this is one of the reasons that models like stable diffusion are so impressive. Not only can they generate these amazing and compelling creations that we've all seen, but they also don't need much computational resources, at least relatively, in order to do so. Now that we've been introduced to the concept of latent diffusion models in general, we're ready to begin dissecting these models and investigating their various components and training mechanisms that allow these models to work.